To thee we come, O Lord our God. that he would forgive us of our sins. Please now make an examination of your conscience. My brothers and sisters, for penance for this confession, I ask that since there are three readings that take place every Sunday, that tonight, before going to bed, that you please read the first reading and reflect for a couple of moments. Tomorrow night, the second reading, and the third night, the Gospel. Now, if you are truly sorry for offending God and your fellow man, please strike your heart three times, saying, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner, and prior to that, let us recite the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one and the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you. And with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O oh God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. And your Lord, hear our prayer. Let our come to you. The Lord be with you. And Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. With three things I am delighted, for they are pleasing to the Lord and to men. Harmony among brethren. Friendship among neighbors, and the mutual love of husband and wife. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be world without end. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, 
we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Sanctify then the marriage bond in the lives of our people. Bless our homes with your abiding presence, that husbands and wives, parents and children, may love one another as you have loved us. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air, and he brought them to the man to see what he could call them. Whatever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all wild animals but none proved to be suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, This one, at last, is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman. For out of her arm, out of a man, this one has been taken. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one flesh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response for today is may the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. May, May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. Blessed are you who fear the Lord and walk in his way. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. May, May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home. Your children like olive plants around the table. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. May you see your children's children. Peace upon Israel. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. A reading from the letter of St. Paul, the Apostle to Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, he, for a little while, was made lower than the angels, that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom and through him all things exist, and bring in many children to glory, should make the leader to their salvation perfect through suffering. <clears throat> he who consecrates and those who are being consecrated all have one origin. Therefore, he is not ashamed to call them brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Oh. 
A wife is her husband's richest treasure. A helpmate, a steadying column. Alleluia, alleluia. Home and possessions are inheritance from parents, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. The Pharisees approached Jesus and asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write, a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, one God has joined together. No human being must separate. In the house of the disciples, again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And people were bringing children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen, I say to you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. Then he embraced them and blessed them placing his hands on them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. My brothers and sisters, today we're going to have a little bit of a different format. As all of you know, Teresa Balila and myself came back from the Senate this past Wednesday. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to call upon our sister Teresa to come up and to offer a few observations and comments of this past sitting. Teresa. Good morning, Teresa. 
say about the synod, it was inspirational. There is no other word for it. And especially in relation to our youth ministry. Becky Couture spoke to us. She spoke about the youth and what they're doing. And they call it a ministry, a youth ministry. Not a youth condo, not necessarily a youth this or that. And some of the things that they have done, like um, shoe boxes for children, putting together soup uh, containers, and doing great other things. And when she got up to speak after, and I'll address this in a little bit, the future direction committees, uh, group sessions, she got a standing ovation. The youth is not the future of the church. The youth is our church. What, what other else impressed me? Collaboration, not isolation. Too often we sit in these parishes and there's no connection. We got, I got to meet with other members of the PMCC, priests I had never spoken to and got to hear their stories, and they were each very different. I was impressed with a gentleman that was a chaplain at the palliative care unit, the priest, who is now going to be the priest in Stratford. Can you imagine the pastoral counseling that will happen in that church? And on a side note, I got to be with his wife. And as we were coming home after a very late session, and, and, and the sessions were late and long, let me clue, we were in the van, we were tired, we were finally getting back to her hotel. And all of a sudden she looked at me and she said to me, can you imagine the story we could write? Two women and five priests traveling to a motel. <laughs> the uh, working on future directions of the church that was really important we all got to share ideas and why it's important is because we as church often only feel that we're acting alone this future direction committee creates a footprint where we don't have to think about it they're doing all the work we just have to implement them. And they're different ideas. They're not the same things about having a bake sale. They're not the same thing about doing the same things every day. And it's important that you all look at that future direction committee report as it comes out every month. And I think we as the parish committee also have to do that. And third, Seeing the sparkle and excitement in Father Corber's eyes when he saw all the position, all the positive that were going on. And we don't have to reinvent the wheel. And he's becoming involved. This is an important thing. My proposals for recognizing Father Calvo for his 29 and a half years in the PNC was entered into the minutes. My constitutional amendment about uh, returning to uh, faith, morals, and discipline to the people failed. But that's not the important part. The important part was I got up and I spoke about it. There were other proposals that failed. And how is this different from other meetings? Well, other meetings, we spent a lot of time discussing finances. This time, there was no a lot of discussion. And I, I think that was partly the strategic planning of the um, setting the agenda, because it was put, put at 8 o'clock at night. And by 8 o'clock at night, we were all tired. And for me, it's our ministry, each and every one of our ministries. As one of the priests told me, and I don't know what, from what church he was from, he said, 
I give my people their message, and then I say, you go out and do the work. This is your church, your God's ministry. God is speaking to you. And that's all I have to offer. Thank you, Teresa. I try not to give too much thought when it was mentioned about two women going back to the hotel with six priests, but uh, I think we all got a chuckle out, out of it. And I think the Senate, there were, there was true fellowship of people that were coming together. There was a lot of good, good-spirited conversations as some of you know, I'm on the Eastern Diocesan Liturgical Commission. I'm also on the Eastern Diocesan Council on Scouting. But I submitted my name and I was uh, approved that I will be one of the members of the National Mission and Evangelism Commission, which I feel is so important, as well as the National Commission on Scouting. And having talked with many of the people, I believe that we can bring the hubs, or I should say the spokes to the hub, of working with the National Commission on Mission and Evangelism, the Future Direction, as well as the School of Christian Living, and also the Vocations. This synod was my first synod since 1986, and instead of having five days we are able to accomplish our work in three. And I want to thank Teresa, who was an inspiration and who had given support to me. I think we all came away from the Synod a little more fired up with the Spirit, and our work now must begin for the next four years. I will also be calling upon our sister Shirley Melitsky Floyd, because I think one of the highlights of the Synod is what we call what we call the breakout groups. And groups of clergy would meet separately, and groups of people would meet separately. And every single day we had these breakout sessions talking about the five points of the future direction, what we did what we accomplished, and what we must do. And so, it is very hard in five or ten minutes to give a complete synopsis of what took place at the Synod. And I hope that we will be able to provide the information to our people of all our congregations to show that there is a future and that there are a lot of good men and women who are working toward that goal. Again, thank you for your time. The lessons are found in today's reading. Let those lessons be reflected by all of you as your own personal sermonettes. God bless and thank you for sharing and letting us share with you.
of married life and teach our children to be faithful members of your church for you live and reign together with the Father and the Son one God forever and ever
always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Through his cross and resurrection, he freed us from sin and death and called us to the glory that has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people set apart. Everywhere we proclaim your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son of my eyes, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son of my eyes. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. And all of your present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, or who offer up to you, the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living eternal and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again 
giving thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice of the Magdalene host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar, into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the Son of Faith and who now sleep in peace. with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy, number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Instructed by our Savior's teaching uh, and following divine example, we say with confidence,
deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, as also Andrew, and all the saints grant us peace in our day, supported by the help of your mercy. May we be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy Lord Jesus Christ. You said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you. Who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation, though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> I will take the bread of heaven and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me I will take the chalice of salvation and I will call upon the name of the Lord with high praise will I call upon him and I shall be saved from all my enemies may the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting amen Since there are some of us who are having a little bit of an issue with a cold, I felt it was important for me, before distributing Holy Communion, to again wash my hands. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, 
<clears throat> Behold, sons are a gift from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. The Lord be with you. Father, from you every family in heaven and earth is named, hallowed our households as you have hallowed us with this Eucharist, knit together in constant love, spouses joined in your holy name, and bless the children that they may grow in wisdom and grace. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifice is offered. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, the unworthy, have offered into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and for all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness of darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light, which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory. The glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. I bring to mind that following Holy Mass today, a uh, fellowship hour, but also it is scheduled that there is the monthly meeting of the Ladies Adoration Society of the Most Blessed Sacrament. I bring to mind that tomorrow, Columbus Day, the 32nd annual Pulaski Day Parade will take place in Northampton, of which I will be attending. Holy Mass will begin at 10 o'clock at St. Elizabeth and Seton. After that, the annual Pulaski Day Parade, and I've been called upon this year to offer the benediction for all gathered. Um, I will not be having tomorrow night Bible discussion group. I'm still recuperating from 
a head cold that's been lasting for about a week. So I thank the understanding that tomorrow night at 7 o'clock we will not be holding uh, our Bible discussion group. Although I do bring to mind that this coming Saturday, that at 9 o'clock I'd like to continue with the work projects. We're waiting to hear from Divine Overhead Door, who will be installing uh, on the approval of our parish committee a new garage door. And so there's work also that needs to be done around the garage and around our parish grounds. I bring to mind next Sunday is the Feast of Christian Family. Please, my brothers and sisters, please attend. And not only attend, but bring a member of your family to join in this feast day that was instituted in the beginning of our church by our first bishop, Francis Hogan. Please also be aware that following Holy Mass, I will be traveling to our sister parish, uh, St. Valentine's in Northampton, to celebrate Holy Mass. I ask that you remember in your prayers, today after Holy Mass, Father Adam Chalonetsky and his wife Danuta will be flying out to Poland for two weeks. So please remember them in prayer, that they have a safe trip and enjoyable uh, time. I do bring to mind on Monday, October 15th, which will, be, which will be a week from tomorrow at 7.30, the parish committee to meet. One of the things that I did not mention, but I just remembered, next Sunday, following Holy Mass, the parish auditors will meet. I also want, as I thank Teresa, our delegate, um, for attending the Synod, I want to give a special word of thanks to Dr. Shirley Mitlitsky Floyd, who acted as a facilitator on these breakout sessions. Shirley, thank you so much. Looking forward to being able to work uh, with the future direction. There's a lot of good things that are uh, happening. And as Teresa said, sometimes we may feel that we are isolated, but when you come together at a Holy Synod, which I think Probably Teresa and I think Peg uh, Koscik. Were there any others who attended a general synod? Mariana and Richard. You have to be there to really appreciate because the Holy Spirit was present. There were a good fellowship. Not everybody agreed with everyone but there were times that you could feel that the Spirit was alive. And so I am thankful that the, um, that the parish committee and the parishioners of Holy Name of Jesus asked me to represent you at this past synod. I ask that you remember in prayer those who are sick, those who are experiencing difficulties, and um, we pray that in those for whom we pray that God's presence a blessing and healing might take place. And I do bring to mind, we're only a few weeks away, um, our Fall Bazaar, October 27th. Mariana, it is, would you like to add to this, please? Yes. <clears throat> We've got um, signs downstairs, and I'd like people, if they have um, room on their front yard, to pick one up and place it in their yard for advertisement or if they know of any spot that is not on state property, if you put it on state property, they remove it and it's gone forever. So we pay for a sign that we can't use. But please, there's many signs. Um, I cannot put the signs up by myself. Richard cannot because he just had surgery a week ago today. And I was hoping we would get the signs up, um, the big signs, the pumpkin signs. Um, today, I thought they were going to go last week, but um, I will put them up as best that I can. Uh, also, I'm looking for rapid prizes, and um, the week before, everyone here, already uh, knows it's a big work week, and they've already, many have already committed to helping that week before with um, the lumpies and uh, pie making and many other things. But, those of you who are here know that you're wonderful cooks, so please, please, while you're at home, make a loaf of zucchini bread or um, anything and put it in the freezer if you have to, if you can't make it that week for us for that Saturday, just so that we can have lots and lots of good things to offer. 
Is there anyone else? First of all, Richard, I'm happy to see you in, in church today after your surgery. I know that I was in contact with Mariana when I was in the Amish country and that we remembered you, the entire bus <laughs> prayed for you. So you see, the power of prayer again comes through. Um, Mariana, what I can do is I can coordinate because I can send out an, another email of any things that you may have felt that I have left out that we can send it to all the people that are on the mail list. I did remember last Sunday I had printed over 40 of the um, uh, on the heavy card stock and, and I apologize I came into church later on and found out that all of them were taken and so I need to actually make more. Is there anything else that I feel? What's that? Did you put a sign in uh, post? Yeah. You did, okay, because I was going to do that, but seeing you did it already. Okay. Anything else? Then let us remember, first of all, to be grateful for God, uh, to God for all the blesses, blessings He has given unto us. Let us also be thankful that we were able to have a good synod. Let us remember each other. Let us remember our parish that the Holy Spirit might direct us and guide us to God's glory. Thank you. God bless you. And until we meet again, may the good Lord be with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for our faithful departed, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in the mercy and love of God. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.